everyone, this is going to be a Copic Quick Bits video, so I'm going to keep my chatter to a minimum um, to fit it under the 10 minute deadline that we have. Um, today I'm going to show you how to color two different hair styles, um, actually two different hair colors. This is a card that I had done, the stamp is by Elizabeth Bell for Susanna's Custom Art and Card Design. Um, it's called Me and My Buddy and it has a dog, so of course it's one of my favorites. Um, but I'm going to show you how we colored her hair. And then this is a Victoria Case stamp that I've actually cut out part of um, and to show you how we're going to do a golder, redder, blonde color. Uh, this is more of a lighter brunette. So let's get started. For this lighter brunette we're going to be using E25, E31, and E50. I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you. When I color hair I like a lot of dimension in my hair. I always use at least three colors, sometimes four. Um, if it's black hair maybe even five. Um, but what I like to do is create movement by having very contrasting colors. So E25 is my darkest, E50 is the lightest. Each center area of the hair, including the bangs here, the sides here, the sides here, are going to be the lightest. I'm going to keep my darker colors at the tips of each of those sides and then along the back of her crown. And I always start with my darkest. If you've watched my videos, you know how I color. Doesn't mean that you have to do it the same way. I'm just going to show you how to bring a little bit more depth and um, movement into hair colors so they don't look so flat. They look much prettier when you have some movement going on there. Brings that image to life. I colored that headband because sometimes I get carried away um, and I color right over it and then I realize when I'm done that I've colored right through the headband which can be a problem. Now I'm taking my E31 and I always move my strokes in the direction that the hair is drawn. Keeps it more realistic. Makes those strokes look like more like hair. I'm just going from the edge of what I'd already done, which was the E25, and out a little bit more. Now I'm going to take my E50 and I'm just going to fill in. I'm not worried about huge blending right now because I'm going to come back in with my colors and lighten and darken everything up. I'm going to take my E31 and I'm going to draw out some more color into that lighter area. You want a soft blend. You don't want to see a lot of lines. In the hair between color. And that's why I call it a soft fade. A progression from light to dark that's smooth, not choppy. And then we come back in with that E25 and I'm just going to darken up these tips. Fill in any little spaces that I may have missed. And then come back in with that 31 and just blend it out again. Every time I lay down color I always blend out those edges. That's what gives you that smooth fade from color to color. You don't necessarily cover color over what you've already done, especially you never want to take your light over into your dark. It will work like a colorless blender and remove that color or move it out of the picture, which usually means you're moving it out here or into her face, which is never good. And there's her hair. And, you know, sometimes I come in and I'll play. It, you know, never think that this is something that can be whipped out super quick. A lot of times as the ink dries, you know, it gets a little lighter. so. You might find yourself coming back in here a couple times and um, adding a little bit more ink, and that's okay. You just don't want to put too much ink into the paper. You don't want to oversaturate the paper. Um, if you've oversaturated the paper, you'll start getting feathering. Um, even with any of the good papers, what I'm using is the Cryogen um, from Paper Temptress. Um, even if I sat here and colored over and over and over this, eventually it would get oversaturated and start moving out and the feathering never looks nice and it's always hard to fix. So there's her hair. Um, 
with this large section of contrasting colors, you get movement. So it appears that her hair is bumped out and a little bit wavy. Um, it just gives it a lot more life than if you colored it with one or two colors. Um, and this is one of my favorite hair colors. Um, my hair is kind of brownish with some highlights that aren't natural. Um, so I always like to bring in some different colors like this into the hair.